Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers in partnership with Hydra Creative to bring you this video which is all about creating a smoke effect with nothing more than just Photoshop's most basic brush and one filter. So I'll start here with um, this image which is from Unsplash which is going to be the basis for our goodishly looking artwork and then I'm going to, in the layers panel, go down to the bottom and create a brand new layer. If I hold down the Alt key and Alt and left click, it will allow me to name that layer at the same time that I make it. So I'm just going to call this uh, Smoke Right and then click OK. So that gives me a new layer that I can deposit all of the artwork in, which is crucial because we want to keep the smoke effect separate from the background artwork of the skull. So with that done, then I'll make sure that I've got my brush tool active from the tools panel over here. And then I need to go up to the brush tip menu. I'm going to select a, a soft round basic brush. Make sure the size of the brush is pretty big. So probably 400, yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, let's go for 50. Great stuff. And then make sure the hardness is set to 0% and hit return. I'm making sure that my foreground color is set to white and then from here all the options across the top um, mode set to normal opacity flow uh, all set to 100% and then I'll hover over this region here and then click and hold down the mouse just to drop one soft brush mark in here and then click and hold down the mouse and drag just like so and um, clearly it doesn't look like smoke at the moment but when I use the liquify filter it that's what will do all the work for us so um, unfortunately this technique you can't preserve the smoke layer the smoke right as I've got it named in here as a smart object um, it's just not possible with the combination of techniques I'm going to use in here liquify in its own right you can use with a smart object so without further ado, I will go up to the filter menu and then go down the list to liquify. So this is for, if you never use liquify, this will allow you to, if I expand it open here so we can see it on full screen, um, essentially uh, more organically melt and pull and coerce the pixels around on screen. Uh, above and beyond pretty much most other features you'll find inside of Photoshop. And one of those features is up at the top left hand side, is what's called the forward warp tool. It is literally a pixel warping tool. And a couple of things to be aware of. Uh, down here, under show backdrop, I don't want it to show all the layers. I want it to show as a backdrop, just the background layer. If, um, if that was turned off, then all I would see is just the current white brush marks in the layer in there. But I need to be able to see the skull as well. So as a backdrop in there, it needs to be the background layer it doesn't want to be in front of the layer that I'm editing. That needs to be set to behind in there. It's kind of the only tedious element to this process is that I'm going to have to come back into liquify several times to get the end result. And I'll have to change the option in there. But that's essentially what it's doing. It's given us a preview in the background of the background layer. And then we can see our brush mark in here. And then making sure that I can see my brush size in here for my forward walk tool. It's probably big enough. Um, for, so size, I've got mine set for this image, uh, 918 pixels. Um, density, I'm going to leave set to uh, midway in there. And then pressure, I'm going to reduce that down a little bit to, let's go for around about 60 in there. I don't want this to be really intense. I'll need to gradually work in the sort of smoke effect. So without further ado, um, I hover over here and then I'll click and hold down the mouse and drag. And then it will literally just pull the pixels around. I'm trying to keep that original white left brush click of the mouse that I first started off with just untouched really. I want to have this kind of like eerie, just hanging smoke effect inside of the skull. If there is such a thing, that's what I'm going for. And, and the rest of the smoke, I just want it to curl and then sort of wisp away around the outside. So I am just clicking, holding down the mouse and dragging little swooshes around of that. And then when I'm done, I will then go down to the bottom and click OK. That will apply the edit to the layer that I created. Now, here's the thing. Obviously, this isn't what I'm looking for. I want something very subtle. So in order to go um, and, and edit this, you have to do this immediately after you've applied a filter. And you can see in here, there's an option called Fade Liquify. So if I click on that, rather than undoing that step, I kind of want to get a halfway house between what it looked like originally before liquify and what it looks like now. So all I have to do is just type in 50 
and it gives me 50% of that edit shown in there. And I can then click OK. So that's important to remember because it's now going to be a case of to refine this, repeatedly going back into liquify, apply some more brush marks and some more warping, and then drop it back 50% and fade it every time. Now, this takes quite a while, and it really depends on how subtle you want the effect to be. I've typically tried this a few times, and um, well, with this specific image, I've had to do it about six times so i'm not going to have you sit around watching me waffle on about how good the liquify tool is um, i'm going to speed the video up um for, for this section but you'll be able to see um the same technique but just warping and morphing that uh, that specific layer called smoke right in here so back up and then i'll, I'll just keep warping this Ooh, so there we go. Um, that is how you take a standard soft ground brush stroke and manipulate it into looking more like smoke with liquify. The only thing that I would maybe look at tweaking after this is uh, possibly blurring some of those. So you could obviously keep in the smoke right layer active is go to the blur tool in the tools panel over here and then just make sure that the brush size is really big again. So something like uh, 700 and then making sure the harness again is set to zero uh, mode is set to normal strength in this case i'm going to bump strength right up in here i'm going to obviously leave the sample all layers checkbox turned off because i only want to affect the smoke layer and then probably where the smoke disperses towards the top of the image i would then hold down the mouse and click and drag across the area again it will take a few mouse clicks even though the blur tool is very effective it does take a lot of work to kind of soften out those regions so as I say, if you do want to just add that in there, you can soften and blur some of those brush strokes out as well. In terms of um, finishing this off, I added some smoke coming out of the left hand eye and the nostrils as well to show you what that looks like. It's this. You'll notice in the layers panel, I added in here, if I remove them, that was the original image. I added obviously from here, the right eye, which was the original, and then the nose and then the left eye in there as well. So uh, that's the technique I used to, for the original image in here. So there you go, folks. That is how you can create smoke effects, especially useful for Halloween when you want to go for something ghoulish and ghastly. Um, but until next time, farewell, folks. <laughs>